One time, a long time ago, I had a conflict with my roommate. We'll say her name is Jasmine. So Jasmine and I both wanted to have a party on the same night. It was right around Halloween, and I love having an awesome Halloween party. But it also happened to be her birthday weekend, and she really wanted to have her birthday party that same night. Uh-oh, what to do? Uh, fortunately, there are several ways we can handle conflict. Uh, let's take a look at those. The first style of conflict management is called avoiding, and that's when both parties in a conflict decide to not confront it at all. They just walk away from the conflict. Now, if Jasmine and I had engaged in avoidance, we both would have not had a party. We would have just avoided it altogether. Generally, avoidance isn't a very good strategy, except perhaps in a short-term way when emotions are running high. The second style of conflict management is called the competitive style. That's when both sides see a conflict as a battle to be won. Both sides of the conflict won't be happy unless the other side loses. If Jasmine and I had done this, we probably wouldn't have been roommates for much longer. You see, competitive conflict, unlike sports competition, is usually pretty nasty. It leads to one party being a loser, and let's be honest, nobody really likes to lose, right? So overall, probably avoid the competitive conflict style also. The third style of conflict management is called the accommodating style. And yes, I know I'm going out of order from the book, but I like my order better. In this style, one party in a conflict gives in altogether to the other party. If Jasmine had said, all right, you have your party and I just won't have a party at all. Well, that would be accommodating. But just like in the competitive style, there is a loser. Although that person lost due to their own choice, it still doesn't feel good. So unless the stakes just aren't high enough in a given conflict, accommodating probably isn't the best way to go either. That leaves us with our final two types of conflict management, compromising and collaborating. Now, on the face, these might sound the same, but in reality, they're quite different. Compromising is what happens when both parties to a conflict give up something to meet in the middle. For example, if Jasmine and I both insisted that we have a party on a given Friday, a compromise might be that one of us has the party on Friday and the other on Saturday. But whoever gets Friday has to have a shorter party so that cleanup can be done to get ready for Saturday. The Friday person has to have a shorter party. And Saturday person has to give up their day. Both sides lost something, but ultimately both sides also got most of what they want. Collaboration is the most difficult to do sometimes. It's when you come to a solution that meets all of the goals of both members of a conflict. We both wanted a party on the same night, and so we collaborated to have a joint party. That is, we invited all of our friends and had a Halloween birthday party. Problem solved. <laughs> if only all conflict was this easy. Sometimes collaboration is impossible. In fact, most of the time, both sides will probably have to give up something. But compromise is better than avoiding, accommodating, or competing. So Jasmine and I got along just fine. We kept the peace and had a creepy fun halloween -y birthday party. Yay for collaboration, and yay for working through conflict. Have a great day!